welcome um, Eleanor Sh Sharpstone and QC, Advocate General, the European Court of Justice for the IIA. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. It's a delight to be here. Well, naturally, um, in Ireland, we're very concerned about Brexit, but in the European Union as a whole. But what do you think the impact of Brexit will be for the common law system, for the European Court of Justice? Well, I think it will certainly have an effect in as much as the way that EU law is put together is a mixture of the legal traditions from the different member states. And if you like, the common law strand within that mixture is going to be lessened by the UK leaving. I mean, that's an obvious empirical fact. Having said that, there are some important contributions that the common law has already made. For example, making the hearing a much more interactive, a much more useful, value-added part of the procedure. And things like that are going to stay. I mean, there's no reason why that should change. And of course, we have still, mercifully, in Ireland, and to some extent perhaps in Malta, we have a continuation of the common law tra tradition and the contribution that the common law can make, even as when if the UK departs. Okay. And you recently, in um, an opinion on the 31st of October, um, you identified three important strands in EU legal um, order, the rule of law, the principle of solidarity, and the, the duty of sincere cooperation. So why is solidarity um, important in terms of affording uh, protection to refugees, to asylum seekers, and does the principle of solidarity imply burden sharing? Well, the short answer is yes and yes, but I think you might perhaps want me to say something longer than that. In saying something longer, I would not limit the importance of solidarity to the area of refugees. The whole European project is built on the idea that Europe is a continent made a terrible mess of things over a century with three major wars. At the beginning of the story, when the EEC comes into being, and before that, when the Cold and Steel Treaty comes into being. The stress is in putting Europe together in such a way that conflict of the very real and very bloody sort that have been seen over previous centuries is simply inconceivable. Now, from there, obviously, we've moved on to much more complicated ideas, economic integration, a lot of other levels of integration, but the basic concept that behind this project that is solidarity, to me, seems to be vitally important. And when you say solidarity, inevitably, you are talking about a way of looking at life which is not a matter of taking the treaty and flicking through and saying, OK, what can I get? Yes, there are rights. Absolutely, there are rights. There are also duties. There is also a sense of obligation. And with the duties and the obligations, yes, comes solidarity implying burden sharing. That is part of the deal. Mm, absolutely. And so, do you think the rule of law is really under threat in Europe at the moment, or can it be remedied at all? Well, that, I wouldn't really agree with the, how can I say, the, almost the note of incipient panic behind the question. The rule of law is one of the essential elements of the construct that is the European Union. Again, against the background of having seen circumstances in which the rule of law broke down and seen the consequences of that. And so the European Union is founded on the rule of law. It is the it and the one, our excellence. And that is, again, it's the core element. Yes, in difficult times, there will always be moments when the rule of law is under threat because, to take the obvious example, populism plays to certain undercurrents mm. which do not coexist very happily with the rule of law. I have every confidence that the rule of law is there to stay and is going to be defended. And I would point out that the court in which I have the honour to serve has in a recent series of judgments involving Poland been exceptionally clear about the importance of the rule of law and about the need to defend it. Thank you. Well, Eleanor Sharpson, QC, Advocate General of the European Court of Justice, thank you for talking to us at the IIA. You're very welcome. Thank you, thank you for your welcome.